Hey everybody, welcome to the second video of our introductory AI in Node.js tutorial series. I am Paul Van Eck and I'm with the Cognitive Open Tech Group at IBM. In the last video, we talked about getting started by using pre-trained TensorFlow.js models that already exist out there. In this video, we're going to learn how to build and train a simple deep learning model from scratch in JavaScript. Here, we expect users to have basic knowledge of Node.js and some familiarity with AI and machine learning concepts. To outline what will be covered, first we'll go over some programming concepts with TensorFlow.js and how to convert existing Python models for it. Then we're going to build and train a neural network to help classify fashion and clothing items using the Fashion MNIST dataset. Lastly, to top it all off, we're going to show how you can apply transfer learning to use the train model to classify for new classes. Links to the full tutorial and source code can be found in the description below. Now let's get started. So conceptually, a neural network consists of many layers of weights and computations, which are represented as nodes and edges in a graph. To help implement these neural networks, TensorFlow.js offers two APIs, the low-level core API and the high-level layers API. At the low level, you typically have tensors combined with operations. Operations include linear algebra and machine learning computations on some input tensors, producing new tensors as results. These tensors and operations are strung together to produce neural networks. Now, looking at the High Levels Layers API, you have something that pretty much imitates the Keras programming style in Python, just in JavaScript syntax. The main concept with this is that you create a model object, which represents your deep learning model, and add any number of layers to the model to implement your model architecture. This is by far the most popular way of constructing neural networks due to its ease of use. We'll see this in action in just a moment, but first, let's go over conversion real quick. As we saw in the last tutorial, there are many open source pre-trained models for TensorFlow.js. However, more models are trained and available in TensorFlow and Keras Python formats. For those models, conversion is necessary before they can be used in TensorFlow.js. All you really need is a Python environment and simply pip install TensorFlow.js to install the TensorFlow.js converter. Then you can run the Python command line tool to do conversions. For example, this would be the command for converting a Keras HDF5 model to the TensorFlow.js graph model format. Take note, however, if the model includes operations which are not supported by TensorFlow.js, conversion will fail. Learn more about the TensorFlow.js converter and supported ops in the TFJS converter repository. So, to build our own model. For this, we're going to use the high-level layers API, and we'll go through the following steps in the process. Loading the data, defining a model, training the model, and then finally testing or evaluating the model. As mentioned before, we will train a model to help classify some of the classes in the Fashion MNIST dataset. So first things first, let's create a new project directory, initialize it with npm init, and then install TFJS node. Next, let's download the dataset, which can be found on the IBM Dataset Exchange. The Dataset Exchange provides a curated list of free and open datasets for you to use. After the download, extract the tar file into the project directory. Once that is done, you should have a Fashion MNIST directory containing two CSV files, Fashion MNIST Train and Fashion MNIST Test. These represent the training and testing sets. The first column of each CSV file represents the label for an item, or rather the index that corresponds to a label. The remaining columns represent the pixel values, 0 through 255, for the image, which is 28 by 28 pixels, or when multiplied, 784 total pixels per item. Now we need to create a loader for all of this CSV data. Let's create a new file called buildmodel.js and then populate it with some starter variables. Take note of the train data URL and test data URL variables to ensure that they are set to the proper path of the extracted data files. Here we have a labels array containing all of the labels in the Fashion MNIST dataset. And this is what we will use to denote we only want to use the first five classes in this array. For this, we only want to use half the dataset so that in the next section, we can take the model we trained here and see how transfer learning works with the second half of the dataset. The rest of the variables pertain to image properties. Batch size and epics value are training hyperparameters. These can be configured to your liking, but the current values should work well enough. Next, let's add the bit of code to load the data with a function called loadData, for which it will accept the data URL and batch size as input parameters. We will be using the TensorFlow.js data API, which helps with loading and preparing the data for usage in our models. The primary loading is done right here with several chained methods. First, we use the CSV method to load and parse the CSV file specifying that the label column is, of course, the label. Then we apply a normalized function to each data entry using map. This normalizes the pixel values, which are 0 to 255, to be between 0 and 1. 
Then we will use the filter method to get the first five classes as denoted by the num of classes variable. Next, we run each data entry into a transform function to convert each image's pixel values into a 3D tensor and also convert the label representation into a one-hop vector, which is commonly used for categorical classification problems. Lastly, we call the batch method to make sure all the data is grouped into batches of size batch size, which is 100. Next at the bottom, let's add the run function to call the load data function then print out the first batch in the dataset. Let's save and run the app from the command line. When the code is run, the training data is loaded, normalized, and turned into tensors. Here we see the label values in one hot encoding, and the normalized pixel values for the first batch of images. So now that we have the data loading mechanism, it's time to build our model. For image classification, convolutional neural nets have been shown to be effective in extracting useful features from the images so that the model can learn. So let's use that. So back in our buildmodel.js file, let's create a build model function like this. The model architecture here simply consists of two layers of 2D convolution, along with computing the max pull after each layer. Feel free to make changes to the model, like adding more layers or changing activation functions, but this is what we'll go with for this tutorial. As you can see, constructing the model is pretty straightforward using the TFJS layers API. We first create an empty model using the sequential function. We then build the model by arranging layers in a linear order with one layer feeding the next. The tensors between the layers are allocated automatically, so you only need to manage the input tensor that feeds the first layer. That is why we only specify the input shape in the first convolutional layer. At the end, we flatten the input to prep for the fully connected output layer. Since we are doing a classification, we are using the commonly used softmax activation function, which will give us a probability distribution representing the likelihoods of an element belonging to each of the classes. After the model is built, before we can use it, we must configure it with the compile function. Here we specify the optimizer for which we choose the atom optimizer, and then the loss function for which we use categorical cross entropy. We also specify accuracy as a metric to be evaluated during training and testing. We then return this model. Now let's update the run code to call this. Here we call the summary method of the model so that when we run the script, we can view the architecture details. So let's save and go ahead and run the updated script. Now we see a summary of the architecture with the shape and param count at each layer, and also a count of trainable params at the end. These trainable params are the weights that will be adjusted to minimize loss during training. Now let's add a function to handle training in our script. Let's create a train model function like this one. This function will take in the model to be trained, the training dataset, and an optional epics argument to denote how many times we should loop through the dataset for training. We specify two callback functions to help us get information during training like the current epic and the training set accuracy after each epic completes. The fit dataset function is a great function that will handle the training for you given the training configuration and dataset. Very convenient. Now, before we kick off the training, let's create a function to evaluate the model when the training completes using the testing dataset. It is important that we check how the model performs on data it hasn't seen yet. Here we call the evaluate dataset function that will collect the accuracy for us on the specified dataset. So now let's update the run code to call the train and evaluate functions we just made. But before we run the script, let's add one more bit of code to save the model so that we can use the saved model for inference later and even for transfer learning. To do that, we need to call model.save, specifying a directory path. Here we are saying that we want the model files to be saved to the fashion MNIST TFJS directory. Finally, let's save and run the script. The model goes through training using the training dataset and iterates for the number of epochs defined. Each iteration will display the loss and accuracy values. You should see the accuracy improving after each epic. This may take several minutes, so just give it a bit. When the training completes, the testing set is evaluated on the trained model. We are hoping for around 90% test accuracy, and it looks like we got it. After the evaluation is complete, the model is saved to the directory we specified in the code, which is fashion MNIST TFJS. Here we can see the model.json and weights file. Now let's use the model we just trained for inference on arbitrary fashion images. Since the dataset we trained on had only 28 by 28 grayscale images, any image we want to run through the model will need to be converted to this format. For that, we will use GIMP, an image manipulation program. Simply install it with npm install. Next, create a new testmodel.js file and add this initialization code to it like we had in the build model script. This time we also require GIMP, then using GIMP, we make a two pixel data function that will convert an input image into the needed format. This function will return an array of these pixel values that are normalized between zero and one like before. 
We can then add the code that runs the prediction. This function here we'll call the toPixelData function to get the pixel array. Then we convert it to a tensor with this shape. Then expand dims to get the tensor into the expected shape. Then finally feeding it into the model's predict function. The rest is just finding out the index of the highest score in the output array and comparing it with the indices in the labels array. Finally, we create a run function to put all the pieces together. We take in an image path as a command line argument. We then load the model using tf.loadLayers model, then run the prediction function logging the result. Let's try it out on one of the sample images. The output will be an object containing the prediction and score for each available label. As you can see here, it correctly predicted the label for this given image. Now moving on to the next part of the tutorial, I think it'd be pretty useful if we go over how we can perform transfer learning. Training models can take large amounts of time, especially for extensive models with millions of trainable parameters. Transfer learning shortcuts a lot of this training work by taking a model trained on one task and repurposing it for a second related task. We do this by replacing the final layer or layers of the pre-trained model with new layers and then train them with new data. A major advantage of this technique is that much less training data is needed to train an effective model for new classes. In our case, the two tasks are very similar. We just want to use the model we trained on the first five classes of the Fashion MNIST dataset and train a classifier for the remaining five classes. So to get started, let's make a copy of the buildmodel.js file we created earlier and call it transferlearn.js. There are a few things that need to be altered from this file. First, we need to make data loading adjustments. We need to alter the filter function so that we now get the remaining classes of the dataset we didn't use previously. Then we alter the transform function to accurately map the final five labels to one hot vectors. For example, Sandal has a label number of five, so we subtract the number of classes from it to get the hot index in the one hot array. Note that we only have to do these data loading changes because we are splitting data from the same CSV file. You wouldn't typically have to do this. Next, since we are no longer building a model from scratch and are going to rely on the model built from before, let's change the build model function. We can remove all this, and this time, build model will require an argument for the base model. So first, let's remove the last layer of the base model. If you recall, this is the softmax classification layer used for classifying the first five classes of Fashion MNIST. This leaves us with the flatten layer as a new final layer. Next, we loop through the base model's remaining layers, marking them as not trainable. We want to freeze the weights in the base model layer so they don't change when we train the new model. The idea here is that the features extracted in these lower layers can be applied to the new classes and don't need adjustment. Following that, we can now create the new sequential model specifying the base model layers as the starting layers. Then we make sure we keep this to add a softmax dense layer to the model. This layer will have the trainable parameters for classifying new classes. Next, we update the run code to load the pre-trained model from before and use it as the base for the new model. We're going to train on only a subset of the dataset this time. In this case, we are only training on 10% of the available training images from the new set of classes. We make sure to save this model in the new directory as well. Now let's run the script to perform the transfer learning. As you should see, training is completing much quicker this time with remarkably similar test accuracy to what we got training a model from scratch. Not only do we train on less data, but only the weights in the last layer are being adjusted. Pretty cool, I think. To try out this model, we can make some small adjustments to testmodel.js, changing the model URL to the new model, and commenting out the first five classes of the labels array. Now we can run it using an image from one of the new five classes. Yep, looks like it correctly predicted that one. Again, feel free to make any adjustments you want as an exercise. You can try training longer on the base model, adding dropout layers, or maybe try changing the transfer learning setup to not just classify the last five classes, but all ten classes instead. Up to you. So that about covers it for this video. Here you took a deeper dive into programming a deep learning model in Node using TensorFlow.js. You also learned about converting models, building models, training and saving models, and even reusing models. All common practices in AI. Stay tuned for more videos in this series to learn more about AI in Node.js. Thanks for watching.